Well, welcome everyone in attendance tonight, and uh, for those watching our YouTube channel uh, at home, my name is John Godwin. I'm a board of director member uh, for the Carnegie Museum here in, in Fairfield, Iowa. This is our 27th month of hosting a Century or Heritage Farm, and tonight we're celebrating the Century Farm of the Swan family known as Elm Creek Farm, which is a 140-acre farm in Des Moines Township, uh, just southwest of Libertyville, correct? And uh, it was established in 1919, and Deb Swan and Terry Swan are here to uh, tell us about their farm. And uh, I think I'm going to start, Terry, with you. If you can explain how the farm came to be, was it 1919, I think? The 1919, uh, okay. <clears throat> Fred Johnson, my grandpa, okay. mom's dad, bought it in, uh, I, think, I think it was April of 1919. And uh, so I got started. Uh, Mom was born in the house, oh, wow. which still stands. <laughs> and uh, we bought it. And, uh, Mom and Dad bought it in 1954. Okay. And we moved up here in January of 54, and it's been. Or since. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, is that the house is still there? Is are you living in the house currently? Or My is son it? is living oh, in the okay. house now. Okay, and it's it's yeah. part of the farm next to the right. same farmstead. Right. Okay, alrighty. So, it's still farmed by the family. Is that right. correct? Okay, uh, partially. Right. Okay. Partially. And what kind of uh, crops or livestock do you have there? Uh, we've got <clears throat> some cows and calves, and uh, used to have a lot of hogs. We don't have hogs anymore. Gotcha. The crop ground is corn and beans, rotated, and mm -hmm. got some hay for the cows. Right. But, so basically necessity to feed the animals they have. And I quit doing it myself in 2018. Hmm. Had some heart problems, so I gotcha. give it up part of it, what I couldn't do. And yeah. Tinker around with a few calves and cows. That's that's all right. It's still a still a thriving industry, though. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, are there any other original buildings still on the on the farm? The bill, all the buildings are there. The all but one are, are, is there when we bought the place in '54. Oh, okay. They're all still there. Were any of them from the original 1919 purchase that you, or, or was there even any, was the, it just the land that they purchased or was No, it? the house was there and one barn was there. Hmm. And then my granddad built the other barn in 52, 1952. Everything else still there. Hmm. I see. How old is the house? I mean, was it? I'm not sure when the house was built on that ground. Gotcha. Uh, but I know they always said that mom was born in a front bedroom. So oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of a neat uh, family legacy to have. And yeah. um, we do have a, a display on our third floor. If you come down to the Carnegie Museum of the, uh, the Elk uh, Creek Farm, and uh, we have a lot of, there's a lot of things in that, in that display, and one of them, uh, it seems to be that you have a, you're kind of a John Deere family, is that correct? You got a lot of John Deere around there? Been John Deere all our lives. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is there uh, any implements that you remember, like when you were a youth using that you still have, or? Uh, yeah. My brother has the first new tractor that Dad bought. Oh, wow. It's a 1952 John Deere B. Hmm. And he still has that. Uh, the rest of them are coming and going. Yeah, for parts probably after a while. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, what? Are, so besides that, fifty-two. What are the first implements you remember having on the farm? Like, he had a. We came from north of Mount Pleasant. I was born in Mount Pleasant. We lived out north, up by Trenton, okay. in Mount Pleasant. And he had a team of horses and a 40A John Deere. And then when the horses got too much to handle, I bought the 52B, and I can remember walking the horses, team of horses, down the lane with the truck. Was it all uh, 
gravel then, or did you have dirt roads back uh, then? The lane was <laughs> sort of graveled. <laughs> every, now, every little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it got graveled once, and then yeah, after yeah, a while, it kind of, yeah. yep, I understand that. So, was it, uh, to get to your main homestead, was it pretty much graveled, though? Yeah. The other ways, so. Yeah. Didn't have to worry about getting stuck too much? And yeah, not, not too much. <laughs> Did you have any farm trucks or uh, big harvest trucks or anything? Uh, not then. Uh, we, we never had a, what you'd call a farm truck. You know, grain a, truck. Grain or, truck. Yeah. Till about 1968. Probably got pretty good use out of that once you found out that yeah. it was a good idea yeah. to get one, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, uh, did you have any uh, cars that you remember riding in up and down those roads? Or When we moved up from <clears throat> Mount Pleasant, we had a 1929 Model A. I think it was a 29. And uh, I thought a 52 Plymouth. Oh, okay. And. Uh, had the Model A sitting around. We didn't use it very much, and neighbor kid wanted it, so wow. Dad sold it to him. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pretty big, busy year in 52 when we get yeah. the vehicles and the, the yeah. tractors and everything. So, I know you said you have a brother uh, has a tractor. Uh, well, there's a family photo up there. Is it you and it's your parents and you and your brother and sister? Yeah. Is that correct? And right. Who are, what are their names and where do uh, they live? My brother's name's Gail, and he just lives right west of the home place. Okay. And uh, my sister Janet lives in Amarillo, Texas. Oh wow! Did you all have to do a lot of farm work back in the day? When oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, just general farm stuff. Yeah. Right? What was a day in, like when you were in high school? What kind of chores did you have to do besides going to school? Oh, I had to milk cow. Get up and milk cows before I went to school. Oh. And then milk. again, when you got home, probably. Yeah, milk, <laughs> milk fifteen cows. Oh, wow. We did have a milking machine that milked 13 of them. We had some milk two by hand. Oh. And hogs and sheep. And yep. <coughs> so what time did you have to get up to do something like that before school? Five o'clock. Oh. And was there, a, what kind of schoolhouses were there around there? I mean, was it, was it, did you go to schoolhouse or did you go like Libertyville or? Well, when, when, in 1957, they had a reorganization. We went to a country school, Des Moines Number no. Five, okay. which was uh, half a mile across the field, and uh, went there for. Well, when we moved up here in '54, I was eight or third grade, and went there. And then when I got to seventh grade, they reorganized, and. We went to school in Libertyville, and they closed the country school. Mm, okay. And uh, spent two years in Libertyville at uh, the seventh and eighth grade, and then went to Fairfield four years of high school. Oh, okay. How far was it from the farm to the high school? I mean, how long did it take you to get to uh, high school? Well, we went to the buses. Uh, yep. It was well, about 12 miles from high school, from oh. Fairfield. Yeah. It's not terrible, but long enough, yeah. and cold enough sometimes yeah. in the yeah. wintertime. So. Um, how did you guys meet? I'm going to ask him to put her on the spot now. <laughs> well, he lost a bet. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, we're just going to quit asking these questions. We've got a whole new story here. <laughs> no, I, I worked at the farmer's co-op there at mm -hmm. Libertyville, and he was a regular customer, and yeah, so that was it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Did you uh, sell a lot more corn that year, or what were uh, you <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I only got half a load this time, but I guess I'll have to come back and get it. It took longer to get it out. I spent most of the time up to go off. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> well, cool. Um, I saw, like you said, you were born in Mount Pleasant. Born I, in Mount I Pleasant. saw there's some diplomas in there. Is that your father? Is that Rex and, and Betty Jeans? One was uh, Fairfield and one was Mount Pleasant. Right. Is that, was uh, your dad from Fairfield then? or No, he was from Mount Pleasant. Oh, he was from Mount Pleasant, yeah. okay. And uh, when Mom graduated from high school, she went to nurse's training in Burlington. Mm. And I really don't know how they met each other, but 
I remember Dad saying that he slept on an oil barrel out east of, or west of town here overnight, waiting to go see her. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many good stories in this family. I think. Well, uh, <laughs> so then, uh, so she was a nurse, was she? She was a nurse. Okay. Uh, I think she graduated in 38. 38 or 9, something like that. Is she a nurse at Fairfield yeah. then? Or? She started out in Mount Pleasant. We oh, still okay. lived down there. They eloped to Cahoka, Missouri and got married at the courthouse oh, in boy. Cahoka, which still stands. <laughs> and uh, they lived on what they called the Spar Place. I didn't know that. I wasn't here yet. Mm. And then they moved to a Renegade farm from Dr. Tyner that lived in New London. He had a farm out north of Mount Pleasant. And we moved out there, and uh, then I came along, and Gail came along, and uh, rented that. And uh, another farm across the road belonged to an old guy that lived right at the edge of the north side of Mount Pleasant, and he would always buy calves in the spring and turn them out on pasture. Well, Dad took care of We took care of the, the, the pasture for okay. him. <clears throat> nice. see. Um, would you, did your dad have another job at, when he moved right. to Libertyville or? When he got out of high school, he started working for a insurance company. Hmm. And uh, what to enlisted in the service and they rejected him because he, they found spots on his lungs and they thought it was tuberculosis so they wouldn't accept him and the doctor told him to get a job outside hmm. and that's how he started farming. Is it really? And he grew up on a farm. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. But, Do you know where uh, Fred and, is it Effie? Fred and Effie. Fred and Effie Johnson, do you know where they originated they from? They originated uh, down in the Stockport area. Oh, they did? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then they um, found their way up this way? And... Yeah. Now, I never knew Fred's dad. Well, not, well, I never knew Effie's dad either, but I saw a lot of pictures of him. Hmm. His name was Carmichael. And uh, oh, she's always talked about Grandpa Carmichael. <laughs> I, I didn't know Grandpa Carmichael. <laughs> yeah. And Dad was, uh, his, his dad, his name was Oscar, and uh, they originated out between Winfield and Mount Pleasant. I'm not sure just where, but okay. in that area, Winfield area. I see. Did they end up staying in that, that area, or did they? No, uh, my, my dad's dad, Oscar, he died, I think, in... in 56 or 8, uh, he, didn't, he was old, old, old right. man when right. I was born, and uh, they lived in just south of the Bull Thrashers. Oh, okay. Park there. And then they, when he quit farming altogether, he moved into town, into Mount Pleasant. Hmm. And nice. that was the first time I saw a hayloader Really? They put up loose hay. And uh, I was out in the way <laughs> <laughs> one day when they had, they had another load of hay to pick up and I sat there and watched that. Oh, that was a pretty good idea. Huh? Oh, not too many <laughs> see that anymore. Yeah. They just. Yeah. The way things have, uh, yep. you know, gotten more They're sophisticated. with horses. Yep. Yep. Um, there's a, up in the display, there is an original weather vane and it's got a horse on one end. Is that, is that, and then do you that, have any story on that or if it was at the farm? That was at the farm when we moved there. That oh, was, okay. My granddad had put that up. Oh, wow. Yeah. What, was that building gone now or did it just come uh, down? No, no, it was on uh, the North Barn and took it off and we put a new roof on it. Yeah. 
So those things don't get put back on, do they? They're, well, it's at least you, at least you have it. Yeah. He had lightning rods on everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. But back in the day, that was the thing to do, or yep. he thought it was anyway. So. Well, that was the popular consensus back yeah. then. Yeah. We had a few <clears throat> buildings like that as well. So, yeah. um, do you know how old that thing is then? So it'd probably be. <clears throat> Well, at least 100 years. I was going to say, it's got to be. It's very detailed for, for being a weather geek. Of course, you know, the people took a lot of time in, in doing that stuff back in the day. So, um, I, I also saw there's a uh, there's an article on there about soil conservation. You said your dad was a big into soil conservation and uh, good stewardship of the land, which obviously <laughs> is one of the reasons you probably still have it today because, I mean, it didn't wash away. or It, it really helped. Yeah. It really did. What kind of things did they do? My granddad, <coughs> when, when he bought the place, there was a dam east of the house, you know, draw, that was built in 1936. And it was built by the CCC. Hmm. And uh, as a tile, two tiles running in it, one down at the bottom and then one about halfway up. And they built terraces out in the fields and drained it into this dam hmm. and uh, which was all built with a spade and slip scrapers no kidding and they laid all the tile by hand of course clay tile yep and then in the i think it was 80 or 81 they weren't parallel terraces they just went with the ground oh, okay yeah and uh, they were a booger to farm. <laughs> I bet. So in 81, 80 or 81, Dad went to the soil office and they drew up a plan to straighten all those terraces and put in t tile in them terraces. Huh. Or tile out, whatever, whatever you call them. Yeah. And um, we laid those tile by hand. Okay. Clay, all clay. Oh, it's clay still in the, 1981. Yeah. Wow. Well, the guy that dug the, <clears throat> did the dozer work was an old timer. He didn't want nothing to do with plastic. Mm -hmm. It was you know aluminum standpipes and intakes and <clears throat> clay tile. Yeah. Well, that didn't last very long because you turn the cows out in the fall, the cows rub on them and break them off. Yeah. So they most of them have been replaced with plastic. I, would, I, can, I can imagine. I can imagine. Is it pretty, pretty flat ground out your way or is it? Uh, most of it is fairly flat. There's some rolling on the north side of the road. Oh, okay. Uh, That's true. Yeah. Nothing real steep or anything. Yeah. So the timing worked pretty good when before the cows got to it. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Well, that's good. Um, there is a seed sower bag up, up top there that, and it's got like a a thing you put over yeah. your shoulder yeah. and then is that is the bag itself of significance or is that just something you guys use or uh, who, who used that well my it was my granddad's okay uh, fred effie's and i never saw him use it <laughs> but when we moved up there of course we always called him grandpap grandpap would move to town libertyville and just about every day he'd come back out to the farm mm -hmm. And we had some, I don't know, seeding some waterways and stuff. Well, that was how we seeded it with my hand. But it was his bag that we used. Yeah. Uh, probably told you stories about how he did the whole. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Even though you sure. never saw him use yeah. it. Sure. Right. <laughs> um, there, when we moved up there, there was an old building. He owned the 140th dad bod. And he owned the 40 right west of it, hmm. adjoining. And when we bought the place, the dad bought the place, he just bought the 140 because he didn't want to sell that other 40. Oh, okay. And we bought it, I think, I don't know, four or five years later. Hmm. Well, there was a house and an old corn crib sitting up there. And uh, nobody had lived in it for years. So we tore that down to build a corn crib on the farm. And you tear down an old building and save the lumber to build a corn crib, you build an old building. Mm -hmm. Well, my job was to pull the nails out of those 
<laughs> rafters and studs and stuff. And when we went to build a new building, get the bag of nails out or can of nails out, you know, and Grandpa, my old Thunderation boy, don't ever drive a rusty nail. Mm. Well, why did I pull them <laughs> and straighten them out? But get them something to do. I was gonna say, out of their hair, see? I mean, you're probably pulling the big nails oh, out of yeah, the rafters yeah, and all this stuff, but. I, I couldn't ever figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you're too antsy, you just wanted to. Uh, Give you something to do. Well, keep keep out of the way, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys have any hunting ground or anything down there? Or did you guys do any of that? No, we never did. Uh, <laughs> Dad was never a hunter, and I never did have time. I guess. Well, I had a gun to shoot the rascals that come around. He still got the, the first gun that I that he ever bought. Oh, wow. was a, I think it's a 1904 Winchester okay. 22 rifle. Yeah. Which is old. pretty popular. That's what we had too. Was a, and the skunks came around and the cattle. We use that twenty-two out of dad would. So, um, I, they're also up in the uh, in the display upstairs is an FFA jacket. And you were a president of the local chapter. And what year yep. was that? Sixty-four. Sixty-four. Okay. And uh, what was it like being an FFA back then? Uh, Did they do? It was good. Okay. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, we had a super teacher, in, uh, Keith Wells. Okay, yep. Uh, a lot of people made fun of Keith, but Keith was thorough and he was good. And we went, you know, from one end to the other. Took us to soil contests and welding contests, and we had a uh, pretty good record at, uh, in state contests. You know, the parliamentary procedure. And, creed speaking and all that stuff. Mm. Uh, we always did very well. Did you have any, uh, and just so you know, he was my teacher his last year. Was he? My freshman year was his last year, so he still was doing that stuff. Yeah. Because we also, I remember going to the uh, Dairy Cattle Congress in Waterloo. Yeah. He'd take us up there. And, yeah. So yeah, it was a, those were fun times back then. Oh yeah. You, you, yeah. you learn a whole lot. I mean, the stuff probably didn't change from 1964, the room anyway, and all the stuff yeah. in the FFA building. But I mean, it was, pertinent to what was going on, and he was very thorough and very okay, cautious. Was, was it 64 that the ag building burnt? Could have been. I think it was the 64. Just right after you left, you just burned it down? Well, no, we were still there because when we went to the welding class, I had a welder at home, and we were short a welder or two. Of so I brought mine in, oh, so okay. we could use there, and it burned up. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you explain that to the uh, everybody? Well, they they replaced it. Oh, that's good. Goes, but, well, that's good. Did but you? But I know we had our ag classes in the old wrestling room at the oh, okay. high school down in the basement. Yep. yep. Yeah. You know that. So. Um, did you show any cattle or hogs or anything at the county uh, fairs or anything? Showed or? one calf at the county fair. Uh, started out with sheep, mm. and uh, the neighbor kid and I entered a lamb scramble at Kiosakos. Okay, you got to explain fair. that to me. Well, they they mm. had about twenty kids lined up. One on one side of the pen or the area, and one on the other, and some on the other, and turned six sheep loose. Oh. And if you caught a sheep, you were in the sheep business. <laughs> <laughs> and we, this friend of ours, the neighbor kid, Bill Davison, we both caught sheep. Oh, wow. And he caught a Suffolk, and I caught a Cordale. And that's how we got started in the sheep business. <laughs> <laughs> how long were you in the sheep business? Oh, probably eight years. Oh, no kidding. Something like that. Wow. Yeah. They should do that Didn't now. have a lot, but just some, you know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I took sheep to the fair once. And that was, I can't remember what year that was. At reserve champion of Oh, wow. So. It was a pretty good one-time deal. Yeah. So uh, how did you get the sheep home, and how did you tell your dad uh, he's in the sheep business now? 
We brought an ohm in a car. <laughs> Which car? Back What's seat, car? Back seat of Dad's car. Uh, this 54? Yep. Oh, no, yeah. It was in the 52 Plymouth. Oh, 52 <laughs> Plymouth. That's what it was. So. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, do you, do, you, do you guys, did you have family reunions growing up or did you have a big enough family to have family reunions? Um, or? They had them. We didn't always go. We always had bail and hay yeah. or holding calves or something. Yeah. Nobody so, seems to happen at those times. Yeah. Though. So. Cultivating corn. Yeah. Which we don't do anymore. Yeah. So. Could have went to a lot of reunions that had not But you needed to back then. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That was a different thing. Um, <clears throat> You said your mom was born in the house with her doctor. How, doctors still do house calls when you were growing up, or did, did you have a medical place well, nearby? Was, or? Mom took care of us. That's we, true. We, we never, doctor ever came She knew what was wrong with you. Yeah. She, well, take she thought she did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you, uh, did any, did you have any side occupations growing up while you were, while you were farming? Uh, no, I just bailed hay in the summertime for neighbors. Oh, okay. You know, who were I see. Never had a paper route or anything else. I've been long, long paper routes dad, to go on, dad, going on the gravel with the. <laughs> dad, dad farmed and mom nursed and farmed when she got off. So. Yeah. Very nice. Um, is that schoolhouse still there? I was going to ask you. The schoolhouse is gone. Okay. And I can't remember when they did take it down. There used to be a bunch of them in Jefferson County yeah. back in the day. So there's, we're yeah. kind of going through a thing now where we're uh, finding where they all were, and that's yeah. kind of a job in itself. So, um, did you have any pets or anything growing up? Or does he have any pets now? Oh yeah, he still has a dog. Okay. We had, uh, <laughs> the first dog I had was a rat terrier. Oh, okay that would uh, scare everybody. I bet. <laughs> That's what they're good at. <laughs> uh, um, so, is there anybody else has any questions for Terry or Deb while we're here? I mean, any, or any stories of, that they can remember about the farm or anything? Or is there any, anything that you want to bring up? about it, or that we missed or anything i know you have a lot there's a lot of stuff upstairs but <clears throat> we were always milk cows and we had a milking machine mm. which helped on the two yeah and it was one of my job was to milk the two by hand and one, when, one of them by hand when did you stop milking cow and when was your favorite when i day got out of high school <laughs> Was that was that a pretty good yeah, pretty good day? That was the we got rid of the cows. And yeah, turned the Angus bull out with them instead of the AI in them yeah. all the time. Oh, they did that back. They did the AI back then too. Okay, when did they start that? Do you remember? I don't know when they started it, but it, I can remember. Well, Pete Whitworth was the one that did it. Okay, and uh, I can't remember when we first started that. Hmm. Uh, that's artificial artificial insemination. No, but it, for those watching at home, we I know that too because we I lived on a dairy farm and my brother did that for our cattle too. So I just thought it, it's our artificial intelligence. We're not, we're not that, <laughs> that up on things yet. But. It's something that I was was always thought I would like to, to try. Yeah. Just to do for my own, but I never did learn. Yeah. Yeah. It's a special skill to do something like yeah, that. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, if, if nobody has anything and there's not any other questions, uh, we do want to invite you upstairs. Uh, on our third floor here at the Carnegie Museum, we have a farm display each month, and this is Terry and Deb's farm. And uh, if you want to come and see the farm displays, we're located one, so uh, one block south of the uh, Fairfield Square at 112 South Court Street, and we're open Tuesday through Friday from 12 to 4, and on most Saturdays, 11 to 3. And uh, uh, we just want to thank everybody in attendance and thank you, Deb and Terry, for, for coming and showing this to us and talking about it. And it'll be on the internet for your grandchildren and, you know, like great great grandchildren. They'll, they'll know something about the farm if, if their parents don't tell them, you know, one of those things. So uh, we also want to thank you for watching on YouTube. Uh, please follow our YouTube channel, like and subscribe, hit the little bell notification down there below the picture. 
And uh, also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and X. And that's under Carnegie Museum Fairfield is how you can find those. And uh, we just want to thank everybody and, and tell you we'll see you at the museum. Yeah. That's pretty good.